cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid and protective layer around the plasma membrane which provides mechanical support to the cell. Certain prokaryotic cells, whereas all plant cells among eukaryotic cells possess a cell wall. The cell wall also determines the shape of plant cells. Due to the shapes of cell wall, many types of plant cells such as the parenchymatous, colenchymatous, etc. have been recognized. The cell walls of plant cells are composed of a carbohydrate known as cellulose. Besides cellulose, various chemical substances such as hemicellulose, pectin, lignin, cutin and chitin also occur singly or along with the cellulose. The cell wall also contains certain minerals such as calcium and magnesium in the form of carbonates and silicates. The cellulose is a polysaccharide and is the most abundantly occurring chemical substance of most plant cell walls. It chemically consists of long chains of the molecules of glucose. Many chains of cellulose molecules lie parallel to each other to form the bundles. A bundle of 100 chain molecules of cellulose forms the elementary fibril known as the mesel. When 20 mesel get arranged parallelly, they form fibrils around 258 thick, known as microfibrils. The microfibrils form large size bundles of cellulose fibers to form the macrofibrils. The macrofibrils, consisting of many cellulose fibrils, form the main framework of the cell walls. The hemicellulose is composed of monosaccharide units such as rabinoxylose, mammose and galactose. It occurs sometimes in between the macrofibrils of the cellulose. The pectin is chemically composed of glucuronic and galacturonic acid, whereas the lignin is composed of coniferal alcohols. The cutin comprises of many fatty acids and the chitin is a polymer of glucosamine. The cell wall is complex in nature. It consists of three layers, namely the primary cell wall, the secondary cell wall and the tertiary cell wall. The first form cell wall is known as the primary cell wall. It is the outermost layer of the cell and in case of the immature meristematic and parenchymatous cells, it forms the only cell wall. The primary cell wall is comparatively thin and permeable. Certain epidermal cells of the leaf and the stem also possess the cutin and cutin waxes which make the primary cell wall impermeable. The primary cell wall of yeast and fungi is composed of the chitin. The primary cell wall in plant cells is composed of an intricate network of microfibrils in a gel-like matrix arranged in various manners. Cellulose microfibrils are connected with the help of xyloglucan chains through hydrogen bonds. Thus, a complete and continuous lattice is formed which is embedded in the second network. The pectin polysaccharides form the second network which is rich in galacturonic acid residue and forms cross links based on calcium bridges and other iconic interactions. Structural protein is the third interlocking network which is composed of structural proteins that interweave through the other two networks of microfibrils. 
it forms the wart and weft structure. When a cell is young and small, the cellulose fibers are loosely packed and thus cross-linking of the cellulose fibers is not complete. However, in mature cells, due to cross-linking of fibers present in the wall, the cell is able to grow further. A new class of proteins called expansin is responsible for wall loosening and cell expansion by addition of cellulose molecules to cellulose microfibrils. The secondary cell wall is thick, permeable and lies near the plasma membrane or the tertiary cell wall. If the latter occurs, it is composed of three concentric layers, S1, S2 and S3, which occur one after the other. In certain plant cells, there occurs another cell wall beneath the secondary cell wall, which is known as the tertiary cell wall. It differs from the primary and secondary cell wall in terms of its morphology, chemistry and staining properties. Besides the cellulose, the tertiary cell wall consists of another chemical substance known as a xylem. The cells of plant tissues are generally cemented together by an intercellular matrix known as a middle lamella. It is mainly composed of the pectin, lignin and some proteins. The cell walls in the middle lamella of plants never occur in the form of continuous layers but have many minute apertures through which the cells of a tissue maintain cytoplasmic relations with each other. Such cytoplasmic junctions or bridges between the adjacent cells are known as plasmodesmata. The plasmodesmata or meristematic cells have been found to be continuous with the plasmodesmata of adjacent cells. Through these plasmodesmata, the cytoplasm and the endoplasmic reticulum remain continued to the adjacent cells. Most probably, through the plasmodesmata, the intercellular circulation of solutions containing nutritional products, dissolved gases, ions or other substances take place. The cell walls are the products of cytoplasm. The cytoplasmic organelles, such as the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, etc., play a very important role in the formation of cell wall. The process of new cell wall formation usually takes place in a dividing cell immediately after the nuclear divisions. The cell wall formation is started by the formation of Phragmoplast cell plate. The cell plate is formed by the small vesicles of endoplasmic reticulum which cut off from the endoplasmic reticulum and migrate from the periphery to the equator of the cell. In the equator region of the dividing cells, the vesicles of endoplasmic reticulum get arranged on the equator and thus separate the two daughter parts of the cytoplasm. Later on, all the vesicles, except a few, which form the plasmodesmata, fuse with one another to form a discontinuous cell plate. The cell plate in later stages develops pectin and changes into the middle lamella. The formation of the middle lamella is also accompanied by some large vesicles known as phragmosomes and the vesicles of Golgi apparatus which provide non-cellulose material. Then the fibrils of the cellulose are deposited on both sides of the middle lamella and form the primary cell wall. The secondary cell wall develops later on by the deposition of cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin beneath the primary cell wall. The plasma membrane 
is formed by the Golgi apparatus beneath the primary cell wall. The structure of cell wall is established by the deposition of lignin. Such a process of lignification was required in connection with the transition from aquatic to terrestrial plant life during the evolution of plants. The lignified cell wall consists of microfibrils embedded in the matrix consisting of lignin. Usually, the primary cell wall becomes more lignified than the secondary cell wall. Thus, the cell wall plays a very important role by performing certain functions such as giving mechanical strength to cells and plants as a whole and maintaining the shape of the cell. It also prevents the osmotic bursting of cells by inhibiting excessive endosmosis. The cell wall not only protects the plasma membrane but it also protects the cells from the attack of pathogens. The walls of xylem vessels, tracheids and sieve tube allow movement of materials to a long distance. Besides that, cutin and suberin deposits check loss of water from the cell surface by evaporation. Also, the orientation of cellulose microfibrils helps to control cell growth and shape. The pits present in the wall help produce a protoplasmic continuum or symplast among cells. Depending upon the type of cell, its wall may be permeable or impermeable. Even a permeable wall exerts some regulatory effect on the transport of the substances into and out of the cell. The cell wall thus forms a major part of a plant cell and performs various functions that are vital for its growth.